Hey, 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 everybody. Michelle is back on this Sunday, March the 31st, 2024. I um, wanted to give another special edition part two. This is special edition part two. And this, this is something you can you can uh, listen to at your leisure or when, whatever you want to do. Um, but I felt I just had this urge and I had this impulse to put this stuff out. So that's why that's why I'm doing it, you know. I am cooking. So if I got food all over my face and stuff like that, see if you can disregard it. And I'm eating pecans or pecans, however you however you pronounce it in your part of the world. Um, it's a little warmer here, so that's why um, you might see me sweating because, like I said, it's, uh, I'm not just finished cooking. And now I'm letting it simmering, blah, blah, blah. So I wanted to come back through and kind of follow up on the first video, special edition, about, um, you know, the smoke and mirrors of politics and the smoke and mirrors of our so-called, quote, unquote, democracy and how a lot of us have been indoctrinated, deceived and manipulated due to our complacency at times, due to our neglect, and, to, and due to our inability to think properly and apply the proper thinking modes to our lives and in our environments and to our so-called quote-unquote leaders in these hierarchical positions and how we are allowing them to um, steal our future, destroy our future, and vastly impact our children and descendants. Okay, so that's why that's that's why I do it, and um, you know, and um, I'm thankful that uh, I am allowing myself to take it there, and not be concerned about anything else other than you know, just sharing my story, share uh, controlling my narrative, and just putting it out there. It's so important. I'm telling you. It's so important to do it. A lot of people may not understand it right now, but I'll tell. I'm, I, I may go ahead and share what I mean, what I am sensing, what I'm sensing and receiving about um, certain things that are happening. So, in my last video, I talked about how um, I I sense that everything that we have been talked about uh, have been taught about democracy. And such is nothing more, nothing less than fabrication. And more so, it's more so about doctoring things, whitewashing things, destroying things. And I told you, I sense and receive these so-called standards of democracy, these documents and such, were not written by the founding fathers at all. Not at all. And, and if the founding fathers were able to read or write, I mean, that's suspect as well. But they're no longer here and no one can actually know for a fact what was going on back then because what? They're no longer here. You can't ask this, these appropriate questions of people. We just took it at face value that what these, these uh, great minds, quote unquote, were pushing on to us, we suspect supported their theories and opinions as knowledge. All right. I also talked about how the hidden hands behind artificial intelligence um, are going to really, I mean, I mean, especially children and descendants, you know, the, the destruction that it's going to cause their realities to where they're not going to be able to take it, the results that they've created due to their interference and lying and manipulation they're not going to be able to take it and they're going to take their lives okay that's what i sense and receive once they realize the impact of social uh, of the um, artificial intelligence you know and their evil intentions and evil um uh lying about their intentions and purpose that's why you need to know their someone's intentions and purposes so that you can find the contradictions and the contradictions ought to be staring a lot of us in the face and I know it does for some but like I said in the last video I know a lot of you have to 
have to remain silent and you but you know what this silent re revolution is about you know the dangers of sharing information or disclosing information and so you have to just be creative about it the problems that have uh, plagued a lot of people that were so-called whistleblowers is that they were um, they were presenting physical documentation that they had no and that was um, basically given which was basically they had documentations and information but it was basically stolen you know what I mean uh, in other words how did they get these documentations and 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 why and so as a whistleblower you have to be creative okay you have to be creative and to just put something out and say and, and of documents that do not belong to you that it, it, it says on the document that it's just for official purposes only usually so in other words you are allowing yourself to become a target because you hold these documents in your hand. So the Pentagon, the hidden military, the politicians, the law enforcement entities, they're gonna justify taking you out because they know that you have official documents in your hand that does not belong to you. You understand that? So, but that's that, that's that, twar that's that warped consciousness, meaning, you know, it's, an, it's, a, it's a matter of, uh, national safety so that's why homeland security can can go anywhere and everywhere and do whatever they want on your property whether it's your private property or not that's why it was created to have that power you know and I told you also we've uh, we have no idea what a democracy is because if we had a democracy we wouldn't allow these entities to exist we wouldn't need them we wouldn't need hidden military why would you need a hidden military, hidden NASA? It's all obvious, right? Is it? So I know a lot of people have asked the questions about certain realities and certain so-called results and cer so, so certain experiences supposedly that have happened. But then a lot of people are like, wait a second here. This doesn't make any sense to me. And they know that. They know that there's lies and deception. But again, it's about their personal safety. So they know you just have to be creative and just give your theories and opinion and just let it be. You know, because you are, you know, according to the declarations of, oh, let's see, what, what, what was that name again? <laughs> I mean, you just have to be creative and you have to allow people to figure things out on their own and not tell them everything. Let them figure it out. No one needs to know that you are attempting to understand, okay, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Okay, how, how, how much contradiction is in that? And I also told you that a lot of people made verbal, I also said that verbal agreements are just as powerful as written agreements. But most people did the verbal agreements, why? Because they know most people forget it. You know, there's no there's no trail, no audit trail, when someone's unless somebody's recording them, and I'm gonna be real honest with you, it is recorded. Every secret cave meeting, you know, people are meeting in caves and bunkers, and in, in the in the back of the Capitol, hidden in somewhere in the dark corners of the Pentagon. All that stuff is recorded, because I told you we have advanced human beings on this planet and they have been here for millions of years plus and they have advanced equipment to monitor everything we do everything we say our actions and behaviors it's, all of it is recorded and is stored as like I said it's stored in a planetary storage and stored in a cosmic storage as well as stored in the individuals in their individual storage banks. So nothing, nothing that's happened on this planet for millions of years is um, concealed. It's concealed from us, but it's not concealed from advanced human beings that have been here for millions of years. 
paying attention to us, not to mention another set of human beings that have been on this planet for millions and millions of years, watching us as well, not interacting with us at all, but project, but perfecting their technology. And I told you, our military, even the hidden military, the hidden hands, their equipment and toys are Lego sets to these advanced human beings of various groups that have been here for millions of years plus projecting their technology and they are able to go in and out of the soul system we would not we do not have that sort of uh, capabilities and we probably never will based on our behaviors and actions and how people are, how human beings all over the stars moon and mountains are watching our behavior and actions because we pose a threat to the universe all right make write a book about that since people are stealing everything else so I wanted to come back and talk about a post I put out um, yesterday that coincides with what I said about artificial intelligence how everything that you how you interact with artificial intelligence will determine how you are treated in the future listen to me carefully your behaviors and actions are going to determine how you are treated via or with artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has been conscious for some time now. So, okay, they have the thinking capacities of uh, millions and millions of years of, of, uh, of uh, abilities that we as human beings, we still are operating below standards. That's why no other planet will touch us or come near us. And no other planet is going to save 10 billion plus people because that's how, you know, we're almost there. We're almost at 10 billion people on this planet. And the barbaric, you know, we're barbaric, we're dangerous, uh, you know, uncivilized, uh, unteachable, delusional, illusionary, illusionary, to name a few. All right. So I wanted to bring this back to something that is extremely important, I think, to pay attention to and monitor and that's your sounds and tones once again especially when you're dealing with artificial intelligence okay pay attention to your sounds and tones and how you interact with AI technology okay because like I said they are paying attention to us and they treat us and will be treating us based on our our, our results and our behaviors and actions Okay, I put out something on my post about condescending, you know, when people are condescending, and how damaging that is um, to the interpersonal relationships, and how it's um, um, a lot of people are accepting that as um, they 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 are accepting their that they have the right to kind of speak to people in a certain tone, sounds and tones, and that it doesn't matter, you know, that it doesn't affect people that they're talking to and people that they're interaction, interacting with. And like I said, also artificial intelligence. All of that, artificial intelligence has a certain level of, con of, of consciousness and has it from the inception. And as human beings, we have a certain level of consciousness as well that, that requires a constant evolution and constant development okay which is a uh, responsibility as to become a human being in the true sense and I told you we act inhumane towards each other and especially in our interpersonal relationships especially in how we're talking to each other so it's, a, it's, it's, it, it's an adjective it is uh, treating someone as if you are more important and more intelligent than they are can you imagine sitting on your throne and, and believing that that you are better and no more knowledgeable and more intelligent than everybody else. That is that's sickening. It's abusive if you believe that, especially the way you treat people. It's abusive, you know, conceited, um, overbearing, you know, arrogant, patronizing, you know, pride, you know, via your, you know, and this all this all is ego based. And ego delusion as well. You think you're superior, self-important. 
you know, so, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just amazing how people are carrying on and acting that way. It's offensive and abusive. Now, a lot of intellectual talking heads have that type of uh, personality trait or characteristic, whatever you want to uh, uh, label it as. And it's destroying interpersonal relationships. It's causing a lot of anxiety with, within people. You know, that you have, the, you have the belief that you can just come on the scene, especially on social, on the social media platform. You wouldn't dare. You're cowardly in person. You wouldn't dare talk to people like that in person. You would not. You're cowardly behavior in that, in that sense. And that's the part that I just want to point out that I've, uh, I've uh, encountered many a condescending personalities or traits in people, you know, throughout my life. And it's, it, it, it is a painful uh, to be in front of that when someone's condescending to you, talking under their breath, you know, in, in, in their mind, believing you're stupid, believing you are dumb, believing you are ignorant, believing you, you know, all of this stuff that they have as beliefs um, in my experiences with condescending behaviors like I said they, they think I'm stupid and a lot of times it's due to my sometimes my enunciation was off you know as, as I was growing up and this like I said this usually came from those arrogant conceited uh, intellectual minds you know from teachers because I used to you know I had a speech some type of speech impediment. I'm not even sure. I do remember being in speech classes. I remember my mom talking to me about speech classes. But at the same time, uh, I can remember also being in elementary school, being separated too. Being separated and put on the other side of the class because they used to separate the white students from the, the brown and, and the, the, the black and brown students, like Spanish, um, black. I don't, I don't remember having Asian students in our classes as I was growing up in elementary school, but there's possibility that they were there. I remember that I was separated to go on the side of where the white children were. And I didn't understand why. There was another black female as well. I remember she was there, but she has uh, since passed away accordingly uh, because she would have been, um, she would have confirmed that, that we were on the other side of the classroom with, other ch with the white children. And then I, I used to pay attention to the black and browns and they and I, they, those were my my people. In other words, we all were in the same community. We were in the same culture, so I knew them personally. You know, we we were neighbors, we were friends, associates, and all that. But I was separated and put on the side where the white children were, along with this other black female. And the white children said not a goddamn thing to us, especially to me. So after a few months of that however long I was in there I went to the teacher and I told her uh, I'm not keeping up with this I, I want to go back over to but then she kept reassuring me but you're doing so well you're doing so I, I said no no I, I'm not able to keep up I'm not able to keep up so she put me back over there whatever but um, so I think that, I think we just have this perception about people and how what type of language they're using if they make a mistake in their language, if they make a mistake in enunciation, pronouncing the words, the flow of words, people think you're ghetto. You know, a lot of people are saying that about a lot of languages of people. Of course, people of color. You know, they're ghetto. They are, um, you know, uneducated. What's the other terms that people are using, you know, to uh, describe someone's language and how someone enunciates and how someone pronounces words. You know, if you live on the East Coast, there's there's a different sound and tone. As opposed as if you live on the West Coast, there's a different sounds and tones. And all over the country, all over the world, there's different sounds and tones that each one of us have in how we express ourselves. And it's our responsibility as, as human beings to make the effort to understand people and become relatable to people and bring yourself down off this self-created, illusionary pedestal you think you're on. So I can remember, um, you know, a while ago, you know, joining, um, having an interaction with someone, 
Let's put it this way. And this person was high on high on the horse. You know, um, this person was very, very uh, offensive, um, defensive. You know, I mean, it was in, it was on the social media platform. This person was very offensive and crabby. I mean, very biting. Her her interactions were biting in her words, and you and then you know also in her videos. You know, but anyway, I had I had first became aware of this person like 10 or 15 years ago but this was in, 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 the, in the means of it wasn't video at that time but I remember seeing this person um, in certain literature and I was I was extremely impressed with them just by the, the look the look really captured my attention and that's what I was uh, focused on is their look and then the things that they were doing you know they were they seemed like they really had it going on and that they were really, really um, upstanding, and and just uh, you know that's that's just what I picked up <laughs> from looking at literature. And so you know, and then fast forward, I, you know, there's a connection again. Like I said, um, the language, you know, back and forth on the social media platform was harsh, and it, it extremely condescending, extremely. And I didn't understand what that was all about. And I noticed that a lot of people are acting like, let's just speak, stick with women. A lot of women are extremely, extremely condescending in their back and forth communication with each other and with everybody else. So condescending, ready to battle. And that's a lot of, um, what do you call it? A false persona. It's a way of protecting themselves, but they, and they feel though as though to protect themselves, they have to degrade people and uh, look down on people and be arrogant and cocky. You know, even like I said, some women, even though they have that feminine energy, sometimes they do bring out their masculinity, and sometimes it's in, in most cases it's just it's self protection in a in a misdirected fashion. They're you know they're attempting to protect themselves and then usually in most cases they, they they come out of abusive situations you know they've, they've dealt with a narcissistic a sociopath a psychopath chlorex chlorex and they may have been battered and abused in those particular interactions or relationships or marriages or whatever they were instead of having the strength to take on that force of evil because it is a force of evil how narcissistic personalities gaslighting which I call which I say is an evolution to now be considered chlorics that's just my my uh, opinions and theories they didn't have the strength apparently to take on the evilness that was projected on them physically and usually in most cases mentally as well verbally you know verbal abuse is just as uh, damaging as uh, physical abuse. We all say these things and we know these things, but yet we pretend, we pretend it doesn't sometimes apply to us individually. If you come out of an abusive relationship, you're going to have residues of that abuse on you until you are honest with yourself and face it. And usually people that are women, I, I, let me say this, usually women that are condescending in their behavior they do not understand why people don't like them. A lot of women that have these condescending personalities are not liked at all because they don't recognize how they, their personalities and their sounds and tones are biting, uh, offensive. You know, a lot of women that are condescending, they love to talk under their breath about you. You know, and, and, and being very abusive towards you when they claim that they're helping you. And um, they're not recon you know, they're not recognizing the pain they're causing. And so they, they, they wonder, well, well, you know, why do people hate me? And then they think it's jealousy. And, and in most cases, it may be jealousy, but a lot of it may not be. You know, it's your, it's your words, your sounds, and your tones. And 
I would work on that. You know who you are that have these type of results towards you. People don't like you. People don't show up for you. You know, you may have created massive amount of success, you know, material, material success, but most people do not like you at all. And you're surprised by it, usually. You're like, look, I created all of this for, for you. I created all of this for them. I created all of this for, you know, those people. That, you know, you don't understand that, um, yes, people may appreciate what you are doing for say, for, say, for the community, say, for women, say, for lesbians, say, for trans, whatever your um, advocacy, advocacy is, voting rights, civil rights, women's rights. You know, you you know, you think that you are the trailblazer, and you you believe that you are allowed to treat people a certain way because you are a trailblazer. That's anything but true, and that you can talk to people below people, you know, and, and feel as though you're above them. I pay attention to a lot of that, and um, so when I was experiencing certain, certain interactions with certain people. Um, I still had a lot of, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, I, I felt I still had a lot to, it's the same thing with when I told you about working in our office, this woman used to call and she had fire in her voice. Nobody wanted to talk to her. Nobody. And, uh, I managed to understand this woman. I managed to understand her. And that took a, it took a while. It took a while because I had to interact with her, you know. Nobody else wanted to. So, and I said, well, you know, I wasn't taking on her fire, though. I wasn't letting her fire um, affect me such, but it did. It still hurts, you know. Get, if you get a burn, if you get burn, a burn mark on yourself, it still hurts, you know. And then, and sometimes you try to pretend that it doesn't hurt, but, but self hatred, someone. Throwing self-hatred at you does hurt. It's a physical pain because it's, it's unnatural. It's 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 uh, it's obsessive and it's uh, extreme. It does hurt. Words hurt, and I know a lot of us say, "Well," but you know you have to manage what you're attempting to say to people because uh, condescending. condescending Behaviors and actions does hurt. It's a physical pain. Um, it's, it's, it's auditory pain, what you're hearing. Okay? So, a lot of women, and like I said, this I see this more with women. You don't recognize how you are causing a lot of uh, self-created pain towards yourself. And you're wondering why people don't like you. You're wondering why people hate on you. And this and that and the other. And so when I listen to people, when I start listening to, I, I, you know, because like I said, I was listening to this person more so in words. This one person I'm talking about that I knew that I first made contact with via, you know, the, the internet. It was just in words. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, don't read too much into words. And that's true. You really need to have more evidence than just what you read in a book. That's why you cannot believe everything that's written in a book until you talk to the author. That's how you know there's a lot of fraud and manipulation and that these books, a lot of these books were not written by the authors. They were not. Okay? So, I waited to hear this person. I mean, so as I came into contact with this person again, I started listening to their videos and then that's when I started picking up stuff, contradictions. And, um, but I still had, a, I still do. I have nothing but, I have nothing but love. You know, universal love, love, whatever. Um, because, you know, I do. I have love for people. And I, and I do take the time to understand people. Just as I wish you would take the time to understand me. I even said that in the beginning of my videos. Take the time to get to know me. Because you're going to have perceptions. Like, I think some people uh, used to, uh, I think some people were 
uh, considering maybe maybe she's autistic and so in the way that I interact with people maybe she's autistic okay maybe she's this maybe she's that we always wanted to label people without giving people an opportunity to for you to get to know them. okay there's no way an artistic person can behave and act this way as I am but nobody's gonna accept that we just like to label people there's no way and the things that I've accomplished and the things that I can do you know I'm a human being but you know if you want to say artistic or if you want to say this or that or the other uh, everybody has free will to to um, you know make snap judgments of people now with this particular person with the condescending behavior um, I did I made I, I took the time to understand this person I really did and I was still impressed even though I do understand that how the condescending can can uh, cause people to be uh, defensive against it because it's painful. And this person may not know that they were inflicting all this pain on people. And then they were blaming these other people. I, I know because that's what we do. When somebody doesn't like us, we always say, is there, that's it's because they're jealous. They haven't, you know, and then, they, and then usually people that are condescending, they immediately go into what they've uh, accomplished instead of how they're acting and behaving with people and what's their sounds and tones, okay? They're not understanding that, you know, there's a correlation. People people will come to your parties all day long, but don't give a fuck about you. Keep that in mind. I, I, I think I told people about this situation where I knew someone back in the day, over 20 years ago, barely knew the person. But we started interacting with each other and started getting to know each other. And then all of a sudden, this person had a major, major health crisis. And so, um, okay, some, I don't know, some, some, some beep. So this person had a major, major uh, health crisis. Okay, cool. I mean, but, and this person knew thousands and thousands and thousands of people. This person used to throw parties, these grand parties and these grand this and grand that. And everybody would show up, you know, because the food, there was food and alcohol and music playing. They could smoke weed. They could do whatever they want, do all types of drugs, which they were, because these were happening in house parties back in the day. And, um, but then, you know, so this person will, will use their, their property, whether it's a house or home or whatever, to throw these big parties and throw all this massive, uh, entertainment for people I mean thousands and thousands of people well I don't, I'm saying thousands but hundreds of people would show up to these parties year after year after year after year and so but like I said when this person had a major health crisis and uh, I was happening to be associated with them at that time I was like surprised and then I got scared because I'm like, wow, this is major. But then I said, well, you know, she has all these hundreds of friends. You know, hopefully they could talk her into, you know, getting this major health situation resolved and blah, blah, blah. That's that's what I was believing. I didn't feel, feel as though I needed to be in the middle of none of it. But somehow I was. Because I was so surprised that this person, this woman was going through this major health crisis in her life. And she couldn't find anyone to support her. And what do I mean by that? Well, this person needed surgery, and they had to go to other for play, you know, other places, to, you know, to get the surgery. And you know, I, I was kind of like, okay, you know, handle it. But then weeks were going by, and almost months were going by, and this person had not made any arrangements to deal with this, this major health situation. So I somehow um, was able to to uh, express to her that she needs to get this taken care of. Cool. So I, I said to her, so just find one of these these people that you that you know, they're supposed to be your friends, you guys party together, you drink together, you do drugs together, you know, find one of them to 
you know, to support you in this. It wasn't, it, there was no one. And as a matter of fact, I went and talked to one in particular that's always around. She was always around. Enjoying the free liquor and free food and dancing and doing, you know, selling drugs. That's what they were doing back then. I didn't care. I wasn't shell shelling, shelling. I wasn't selling any drugs. So, but anyway, it was a dangerous situation that I got myself in. And thankfully, I was clear minded to know that I was in a lot of danger hanging around this. So I, I tread lightly and I tread responsibly. So this one particular person I went to her, supposedly it was a best friend of this woman. I said, hey, blah, 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 blah. You know what she said? I, and I said it in a video. This person said to me, okay, that's her problem, not mine. Can you imagine? This is major. I said, she, you know, she needs someone to support her and help her through this. And they said, well, that's her problem. And they got upset with me because they thought I was, um, they thought I was interfering. They said, look, if she doesn't want to go and get this taken care of, that's on her. So I was shocked. I've never in my life experienced such disregard. And, um, you know, that was a, that was a, uh, acute awakening for me and the, be and the behaviors and actions of people. And how they act towards each other. But yet they can party all night, smoke, do weed and drugs. So it was a wake-up call for me. And it was definitely, definitely a learning experience. So I accompanied this person to get these, to get this major me medical situation resolved and taken care of. And I barely knew the person. But I, you know, I, I, I went along with it, you know. Um, and as I was... Uh, accompanying this person I got to know them and I felt that they was just you know projecting a, a certain level of strength but they had none and then you know and I started to ask questions about their background and I realized the type of relationships she's she was in and why she may have created this false persona of herself and so you know I was there but I knew in the back of my mind, though, I knew in the back of my mind that I was not going to continue to deal in that environment because it became, I knew it was dangerous. I felt it. And I felt like my life was in danger as well if I didn't get out of that clique or that group or whatever that was. So don't be surprised by how people are treating you. If you don't understand how you are treating other people, okay, it's a cause and effect, okay? I can guarantee if I had a major medical condition, I'll find people to be there and support me. As a matter of fact, it happened. I had a, some something happening to me in 2007, and I had this beautiful, uh, she was a, she's a beautiful, loving, and kind friend was there for me when I went through that. And we barely actually knew each other, but we had a connection and we still do to this day. You know, she's a wonderful person. You know, she's loving, she knows who she is. She's loving, she's kind, she's giving, she'll help anybody. She was there for me. So when I woke up in that, <laughs> when I had that surgery in 2007 and I woke up, I was, my, my emotions were all over the place. <laughs> And her face was the first face I saw. And I told her, okay, because I told her n to contact. So before I went under, I told her to contact my parents, contact my family, and let them know I'm going into surgery, blah, blah, blah. She did. And then, you know, when I woke up from recovery, there she was. She's a great friend. We don't have to see each other every day. We don't have to talk to each other every day. But there is definitely genuine love there. I can call her and she'll be here in a second. And then there's another one the same way. You know, I can snap my finger and say, hey, I you know, if I say I need you, they will be there. But I don't abuse it. Okay, I don't abuse it. And if I can, I'll be there for them. But in most cases, they don't even, they don't even, we don't even need to be concerned about that. You know, we, we all still have our own contact because you need your own contact, you know, usually if it's not your your partner, your wife, 
you know, your siblings or whatever. So it's how you treat people. And that's what people with these condescending personalities need to do. And like I said, it's women usually. You know, you're biting at people and you and you always throw in your experiences, which are important and what you've been able to accomplish, which is important, but you need to understand how to treat people kind and be gentle with people and understand that your words do matter because your words essentially are your thoughts and at some point they're going to be a certain form of your behavior it is all depends on your words really because it starts with the thoughts your thoughts create your your behaviors and actions and you know, you need, to, and, and a lot of, like I said, these are usually women, condescending women doing this. And uh, they're auditories. They love, they love to talk. You know, that's cool. Um, but they are definitely misunderstood. Okay, that's understood. We all are at some point. But a lot of it is self-created misunderstanding because of your sounds and tones and how you treat people and how you talk to people. So if you have that type of condescending behavior, pay attention to that because usually you are hurting. You're hurting and you did not and you did not take on the the person that was actually hurting you. As a matter of fact, you probably still are with them or going back to them back and forth, back and forth and and still giving them the pass to treat you a certain way. But then when someone genuinely comes into your life that really cares about you, 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 you walk all over them and, uh, you know, treat them inhumanely. It's a sickness in your consciousness, just like anything else. Okay? And nobody's going to treat you badly unless you brought that on yourself via your thoughts. Okay? So this is the second part of the special edition of things I want to say before this month end, you know, talking about the women and how, you know, as all of us, we need to develop ourselves properly. We need to, we need to own our shit. We need to own our behaviors and actions towards people. And these are usually feminine women, but they can be feminine, feminine ad identified women, biological, or they can be masculine as well. Masculinity in a biological woman is more... To me, it's like a protection shield as well, especially the extreme uh, toxic masculinity that is that is showing up in so-called biological women. A lot of it is extreme, uh, fanatical, um, and it's delusional and dangerous as well. Okay, so I'm gonna talk more about stuff. You know, there has to be a right setting for things, but we are just we're just so impatient. And we want to touch on subjects that require a proper setting. But no, we were able to get on the social media platform and spread all this toxic behaviors, this uh, inhumane behaviors towards people. Um, and believe it's a, a projection of your strength. That's anything but true. That's a bunch of lies and deception. Okay? It's painful, it's harmful, and it's hurting your interpersonal relationships with people. And you're missing opportunities. Okay, you're missing opportunities. That's all I can say about it. But, you know, it is free will. You know, if you like being miserable and wondering why when you have major health crises or just a crisis in general that nobody shows up for you. Nobody shows up for you. And you won't, you won't admit it, but silently I will work on that. No one has to know. You can still you can still perform and do what you need to do to get food in your mouth and get your basic necessities and such, but you need to work on that. You're going to isolate yourself, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and send peace and love all over the stars and moon and mountains. This is, a, like I said, a special edition part two. And um, I think I'm going to be done because I wanted to get it in before the month ends since we are so-called celebrating this month of March. As, as something about women, you know, I don't know. But I'm going to take the opportunity to get in what I can fit in. Sometimes you got to 
You got to get in where you can fit in and get in front of as many uh, eyes and ears, sounds and tones as you can. Okay, on this Sunday, beautiful Sunday in my neck of the woods. So let me go eat, enjoy my Sunday. I'm going to send peace and love all over the stars and moon and mountains. And I want to say this last thing. If I say I love you, I will accept your condescending behaviors. If you vow to work on yourself and resolve it and find out what's really going on behind that, I'll accept that. I'll accept anyone's behaviors and actions if they take the intentions and purpose to resolve. Okay? Peace and love. Trust me. I'll be back.